Hi, and welcome to episode four of the Wildwood podcast. Today, we're lucky enough to be joined by Donovan Wright, our Wildwood Bison Ranger. Don's been working with our project partners, Kent Wildlife Trust, in the Bison Bleem project. And apart from being an expert on bison, he's also pretty nifty with a camera. So if you've been, um, <laughs> if you've been looking at any of the photography in the newspapers or um, on news channels across the world, you've probably seen Don's work already. Um, good morning, Don. Hi, oh, Nathan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for taking the time. I know you're a very busy man. So yeah, cheers for uh, sitting down with us. So Don, uh, how long has the Bleem Bison project been going for now? <gasps> Bison have been in the Bleen Woods for the last two years. Uh, it'll be uh, their second year in July. But the project actually started way before the bison arrived. Uh, we uh, doing baseline surveys and uh, all the infrastructure that needed to go in. Fencing, ponds, installing ponds, installing the viewing platform, and of course the bison corral. How have the bison been doing? Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing so well. Wow. Oh, they, they, we, we couldn't have asked for more. Uh, they're healthy, uh, strong. They, they, we've got um, the matriarch who leads the herd. We've got a bull and we've got two younger females and two calves. So we've got, yeah. We've, we've got two we've calves. Got, now. Yeah. And the, the, the second calf was born in Christ, uh, around Christmas time, isn't it? So That's right. Uh, November. Um, the matriarch wow. gave birth to a healthy little uh, calf, a, a little boy, and oh, he is uh, incredible. <laughs> the, uh, just a real landmark for conservation here in the UK. There was a, this is the first calf that was conceived and born in, in the Bleen, which is, which is amazing. That's incredible. Um, uh, and uh, the first calf was born in um, September when they arrived. So it was 2022. So mm -hmm. she's um, uh, she's almost the size of her mom at the moment. She's wow. she's doing really really well. Definitely takes after her mom. A real feisty. <laughs> and are the two calves getting on then? Very much so. They they spend Ooh. a lot of time playing and uh, grooming one another. And oh yeah, they they adore each other. Yep. Um, very much so. And with with the the new calf that was born in November, with that being a a bull, um, what kind of you know what what does that mean? Does, does, uh, will he have to be separated eventually, or like what does? Because I obviously understand with you know the, the genetic pool and that kind of thing. Like what does that mean for 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 the for the project? Yeah, well, that's a really good question, Nathan. It is something that is on our minds. Um, European bison, uh, if you look back in history, they they had a, a tremendous what we call a bottleneck in the evolutionary line. So there used to be loads of European bison and through various reasons, hunting, loss of habitat, you know, their numbers were slowly whittled down and eventually they were isolated in these little pockets like um, the Beowiza forest or um, up in the Kokors in the mountains. And in 1927, the last European bison was shot and the, and the, the species was officially extinct in the wild. There, wow. were, there were none left in the wild. But thankfully, there were 54 animals that were uh, uh, kept in zoos. And um, in, in Poland, the, the, the European bison is of huge cultural significance. And, and um, oh, gee, through um, yeah, dedicated conservation efforts, they uh, created a stud book and they, um, and they started to, to work on saving the, Euro the European bison. Today, we've got over 7,400 free roaming European bison oh, just in the from world. That um, that breeding project from, from zoos, is that? It, well, interestingly, all the European bison in the world today can be traced back to 12 individuals. Wow, that's incredible. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. So genetically, they are a very fragile species, mm. and it's, um, it, it's very important for us to try and keep them as genetically healthy and mm. as strong as possible. So, mm. yes, it does uh, mean that it, at a we're going to reach a point where we need to decide um, how, how, how are we going to play that out and um, are we going to uh, keep certain individuals and um, move others to, to other rewilding projects. Um, fortunately, uh, the European bison are, um, you know, when they were sourced, the stud book holder recommended these individuals and they're genetically very strong. So we're hoping that uh, other projects will, will um, get excited by the, by the amazing work that the bison are doing here and uh, want to see similar rewilding efforts in, on their land and that we can shift them across to, to other projects. And, um, but so we will have to move someone eventually. Mm. I mean, it's moved. I mean, did, did you expect it to move so quickly? 
I mean, less than two years, two calves. I mean, is, was that expected or has this sort of shocked everyone? It, it, it was expected. Um, in the beginning, we didn't expect anything the first year. Uh, that, right. that was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but a wonderful surprise. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, when, oh, gee, when, when uh, we had that first calf, oh, you know, the whole energy in the wood changed. And, 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 and in amongst the herd, it was, oh, she just injected this youth into the mix. And... Mm. Oh, she was absolutely adorable. I mean, to see her, uh, one of my favorite sightings of the bison was watching her. It was early one morning, the matriarch was drinking from a pond and this little thing was sprinting laps ar around her. <laughs> and you, you could see her matriarch sort of drinking and looked up, sort of following her around this pond, going, oh my goodness, you know, if I was only 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, she's precious, and uh, so and and that's part of restoring these natural processes in the woods. Mm. Bison are, are, are feel feel safe and secure, and uh, to to have them, um, you know, carving and doing so well in the woods just is another confirmation that uh, mm. yeah, it's working. You know, it, it's working. Fantastic. Amazing. I I feel embarrassed to say that I. When, when, when the bison arrived, I think perhaps a small part of me thought that we would have to teach them to be bison. <laughs> but honestly, uh, since, since they've arrived, I feel like we've been in bison school and, and the matriarch has been teaching us. Wow. Uh, it's, she is in, incredible. When, when, um, when her calf was born in November, uh, just before, I, oh, gee, I, I, I must admit I, I was a little worried. I had concerns. She's, she's 19 years old, um, so about 70 in human years. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and when I when I was I saw her three days before before she gave birth and she was lying in the woods with the other calf and she had this huge belly and she looked so uncomfortable, mm. and the rest of the herd was sort of milling around her um, and uh, and then um, uh, uh, when 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 I got the call I was actually off site that day at an at, a, at, a, at an event and um, I got the phone call that Heidi one of the bison rangers had seen her with this healthy little calf. Oh man, the f I had this huge sense of relief. It was just, just wow. I'm, I'm so glad that she's okay, and that the casting well. And then, then I was over the moon happy. <laughs> I just, but um, and so the next day I dashed in first thing, went straight down there to go and to go and find her and see if she was okay. And I remembered how protective the first mother was of her calf, mm. and um, so I thought I'll keep the electric fence between us. And mm. um, so I went down and eventually found her, but she was about 80 meters in. And she soon spotted me, and she she brought the calf right up about seven meters from me. Um, I was obviously on the other side of the fence, but mm. and and with the rest of the herd, and they were so calm. I was blown away. I just by yourself, not, though. Just... Oh, it was so precious. It was like she oh. was proudly showing it off, like you know, look at my little calf, and and I felt like such a fool. I thought I can't believe I ever doubted you. I mean, you could just see she's done this so many times before. This little calf was healthy, full coat of fur, suckling, interacting with the herd. Um, Cop takes after his mom. That mm. calmness and confidence. At one point, he bounded up to the bull, and I thought, "Oh, gee, don't do that, <laughs> easy, mate." Yeah. Yeah. And the bull's <laughs> head is the size of him, and oh, the bull was so gentle with him. And and then he started to play with the other calf. And at one point, um, one horn, her, his auntie decided oh, she's going to get in on the action, and he even even managed to sidestep her. I mean, one day old, and he was that agile, you know, uh, uh, on on his legs, so sturdy little stocky legs of his, wow. and uh, uh, just. Could not be more perfect. Oh, that's what, what incredible story is that. I mean, you, one of the things that I, I enjoyed um, when I started working with Wildwood is you sent me like an absolute abundance of photos of, of how quickly the bison and, and the herd started changing the uh, you know the, the you know making roots through the trees from month one to month two to month three. That the change was drastic. Oh, amazing. Know. We, Tom and I, were, were very, very fortunate to, to uh, spend time in the Netherlands before the bison arrived. Mm. Um, we, we went, we visited four sites there, um, uh, uh, Kransvlak, Slikken van der Heen, De Maastorst and, and Felloa. Um, they're very different, they're very different sites. But one thing that we noticed while we were there was uh, the remarkable impact that the bison are having on those four sites. It was so clear to see and just, oh. Uh, the Boswachters or the bison rangers, they, oh, they, they could not have been more welcoming and, and, and just a wealth of, 
knowledge and we came back on a high just so inspired and but one thing we didn't realize was exactly what you said there just how quickly it would happen we knew that they were going to impact the woods mm. but up until that point when visitors would ask us like how long do you think it's going to take and we would say oh uh, 10 years <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to put a number on it but yeah, it's yeah. going to take time but wow the it was the one thing that really stood out um i mean that that day in in, in it was july it was the hottest day of the year 2022 when that matriarch stepped out of the bison corral and took her first steps in the bleeding woods the first free roaming bison in the uk for thousands of years mm. There was this media frenzy, you know, reaching over three billion people and Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and she was just calm. She just walked out, surveyed the area, just sort of assessed it, made sure it was safe. And then looked back and called the rest of the herd out. You know, the, the perfect, perfect matriarch. And then she led the herd into those silver birch thickets and they slowly slipped away, disappeared from, from sight. And uh, about a half an hour later, when you know, everybody sort of the crowd settled and everybody had moved off, I went in to retrieve a few camera traps and GoPros that we had set up to capture the release. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, I noticed their tracks and I just, I know, I know it's hard to explain this, but it's like there was this, this energy that was in the bleen that wasn't there before. It, it was tangible, you know, it was just, mm. And I, f I followed, followed the tracks in um, and almost immediately became aware of the bison-sized trail that I was walking along, freshly created by them pushing their way through that dense undergrowth. A a about 20 meters in, I came across a an oak tree that they'd used as a rubbing post, and you could see bison fur stuck to the bark. Um, there were signs of debarking, uh, branches that had been snapped um, and browsed off fresh bison dung and then I heard this crack and I, and I looked up and there the herd was approaching me and uh, the matriarch spotted me and um, I stopped and she she eventually stopped and we looked at each other for a moment and then I left them to their bison business oh man it was it was a moment I'll treasure forever it was my first r real wild bison encounter and Oh, it just, uh, and, and I mean, that was half an hour after they, they, you know, they arrived. And an hour later, I was walking down the, the fence with um, a Paul Whitfield, Wildwoods Director General, and um, we witnessed something very unexpected. The, the flowers were being a particular nuisance that day. It was mm. 40 degrees centigrade, you know, they were, and uh, the matriarch spotted this large rhododendron thicket. And without hesitation, she walked up to it stuck her head in it and swished her horns in, around in this sort of figure of eight motion and then shredded it from head out down to knee height and then walked out with this large rhododendron wig on her head and you know the 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 bison have been impacting rhododendron and other non-native plants ever since helping us keep them in check and there's a really good chance that the matriarch recognized that plant because um coming from from highlands wildlife park in scotland in, in scotland rhododendron is their most invasive non-native plant so she perhaps used it as a natural insect repellent wow. um just incredible and that's 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 an hour after they yeah. arrived <laughs> and they've just kept surprising us it's just been just constant it's that's Amazing. absolutely incredible. Uh, and, and I know one of the, the the plans for the next couple of months is to maybe um, be able to share some of these stories and some of these experiences um, in kind of a um, an animal talk that, that you're going to be running. So we, I think we're going to be setting something up like that in the next couple of months. Is, is that right? Yes. So we, we that's right. Uh, my role's changed a little bit. <laughs> so we, we're going to be starting um, some bison tours, which is very exciting. I, I can't wait. I, um, it's it's a, a very important part of the project is to, to, to help people reconnect with nature. Um, unfortunately, we're not quite there yet taking people into the mm. bison area, but we can walk around the outside. We can look at the impact that they're having, um, hopefully see the bison and um, yeah, share stories and, and um, uh, interesting, valuable information about these bison to try and uh, just immerse people in the bison world and, and to help them 
see what a phenomenal species this is. I mean, th the dream would be to, 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 to take people in to, to spend time uh, tracking them, following the tracks, observing the impact to show, you know, you see, when, when you start seeing, oh wow, you know, they, they, they dust bathed here, you know, they, um, they browsed a bit here, they um, were rubbing over here, debarking, and then to spend time just immersing yourself in, in, in that, and then, and then eventually f of seeing the bison, and then observing them in their natural habitat, doing what, what bison do, mm -hmm. just, just being, oh, it's, it's an experience that everybody should have. It's, it's remarkable. Well, your passion really? is definitely infectious, so I'm going to be the first person to, to book on those experiences as soon as they're ready. Excellent. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to chat about really quickly as well is, um, obviously, Wild is, is, is an animal park as well, and we had um, two incredible bison with us, Orsk and Hades, um, who sadly uh, last year passed away. Um, Orsk and Hades were absolute ambassadors uh, for the Bison Bleem project um, and and for a, a, keystone, a keystone species for Wildwood Trust as well. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about that and also the two new bulls who've arrived as well recently? I think they arrived in February, is that right? Oh, that, that's correct. So, so um, yeah, Hades and Orsk were a legendary. I, I think if you if you Google European bison in the UK, you'll probably see an, a photograph of, of Orsk. Um, <laughs> he loved the camera. I mean, oh, he would uh, stand up on his mound and sort of pose. This is my good side. This is my other side. You know, he just, uh, and so in the beginning, before we, we um, the bison arrived, they were photographed and filmed and just, yeah, that flagship uh, mm. for, used as, as ambassadors for the project. Um, Hades was a, a different character. <laughs> he, he was so grumpy. Oh, he was a, a, an ador in an adorable way. He was just, oh, he's amazing. And uh, when, we, when we lost him uh, just through old age, um, it was a tremendous blow. It left a huge hole in, 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 in Wildwood. Um, uh, especially the keepers uh, like Gary and you know just who have looked after them for, for years it just mm. wow it really and um, and when we, we, we heard that uh, Highlands Wildlife Park had these two, two young, young males uh, 17 months 19 months old I was over the moon happy because mm. uh, the matriarch comes from Highland Wildlife Park and they work so well with their animals and I thought well if they are even just a few percent of what she is they're going to be incredible and they didn't disappoint wow when those when those two youngsters walked off the back of that truck it was just amazing uh, they are magnificent i think i think the thing that really struck me as well was the size of their horns wow mm. 17 months old and their horns are like this already thick i just thought gee was i know they're feeding them up there but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a scottish diet it's, it's a scottish diet yeah <laughs> But they are, are lovely and uh, we're very, very grateful to have them and they're settling in so well. Mm. Yeah. I mean, within within a couple of hours, they were just, they just seemed so settled. I mean, I remember I was there lucky enough to, to sort of film the beginning of it and then kind of had a little walk around in the, in the afternoon and it just seemed like they were at home and then, you know, they'd already settled in brilliantly. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Don, if I could ask, um, how did you get involved in Wildwood Trust? Because I'm guessing by the accent, um, you're South African. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how did you get involved in, in working with Wildwood Trust? Oh, chasing a dream. Uh, chasing a dream. I, um, when, when, when the Bison Project was, was advertised, I, um, uh, friends and family kept sending me the, 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 the advert saying, you've got to apply, you've got to apply for this. And um, and I looked at it, and um, initially it was uh, it sounded a bit like they were looking more for sort of like a cattle a cattle keeper, and I thought, oh no, um, you know, because they had the way they sort of broke it up was, um, you know, these are must haves, these are nice to haves, and if you've got anything else, that's lovely. And when I was ticking off the must haves, I thought, oh, okay, yep, I'm not I'm not a cattle farmer. Um, my background would be. Um, the closest thing to to uh, to European bison would be Cape buffalo, but yeah, they are very different species. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you had to describe a, a, a bison, it would be uh, quietly confident. Would be a nice a nice way, and a Cape buffalo would be a seven hundred and fifty kilogram stick of dynamite with a very short fuse. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, very different animals. And, um, and, but anyway, I, I, I started to um, research Wildwood and Kent Wildlife Trust. And immediately I was just swept away by the incredible work that they're doing uh, for um, rewilding conservation. And just, it, it was uh, really inspiring. And then, and then I took it further and I started to research uh, European bison. And when I came across, it sort of led me through to the Beowies of Forest and, and Poland, and um, and it it really struck a nerve. I, I I realized how important this project is, and 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 what a remarkable species European bison are. That um, uh, and that that was it. I was hooked. I, I was just uh, I, I came to Wildwood to to meet Hades and Orsk, and uh, I spent time walking the the, the Bleen Woods to. Just to get to know the woods, and and mm. and then you yeah, have applied for the job, and I was uh, so grateful when I got that call uh, that I'd been. I, I honestly didn't think I was going to get it. Well, how lucky that was, you applied! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was really oh, incredible. Um, what would you like to see? Obviously, because you're you're incredibly passionate about bison. Um, what would you like to see in in kind of the the Bleen Bison project over, over the next kind of five years? Like, what would you? And obviously, already they've kind of, you know. The expectations have already been surpassed, but you know what would you like to to see in the next five years if you could if you could, yeah, sort of talk about that a little bit. Sure, uh, Nathan. I think a, a really important part is is um, restoring those natural processes that we want to see in the woods, and um, and uh, I mean the bison are already doing that. They they're already doing it in spades, but uh, I think. You know, a really important part of this project as well is um, creating a blueprint for for future projects. You know, so if, if somebody else wants to um, introduce European bison, um, we we can show them how to navigate all the, the, the you know the, you know dot all the i's, cross all the t's, and and um, you know navigate the legislation and where, how do you, where do you get European bison from? You know, how, all the infrastructure that you need, all these kind of things that um, we've learnt along the way, and. Um, um, so I think just uh, you know a really important part is to just uh, continue uh, to growing, but also being as hands off as possible and allowing the bison to to get along with bison business. Just yeah. you know let them um, let the herd slowly grow, uh, continue growing in the bleen, and um, and then to uh, a very important part is is the another important another very important part is to. Um, is the ecological um, uh, the, the the surveys that are taking place in in the woods? To, to, you know, that Cora Kunzman is heading that up, and oh, they, her and the team and a, a whole team of dedicated volunteers and universities that are involved, five different universities, the Natural History Museums involved, and um, I mean the, the work that they're doing is incredible, um, uh, really detailed, and. Uh, to you know, to con continue monitoring and, and uh, to proving the effectiveness of European bison as a keystone species here in in the UK, mm. um, and um, and then of course, uh, you know, just helping people reconnect with nature is mm. vitally important. Um, these these projects can't survive without local support, and and um, and yeah. You know, you know, you you can read about things, and uh, you know you can you can read that bison debark trees, and you think, oh wow, that's that's amazing. But when you see a bison debarking a tree, mm. wow, it is phenomenal. I mean, their teeth are like chisels; they are perfectly designed for the task. Nature truly knows best, and and and. Another thing is when you're spending time in Winter Woods and just experiencing experiencing these keystone species, you realize that how intricate, interconnected, and complex nature is, and and you also realize that it's impossible to mimic all that. It it just mm. it, but nature does it seamlessly. It just works. I mean, they are, this is millennia of evolution. You know, it just. And so, yeah, that's very important is to, 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 to share that with people. Mm. And, and, um, and, of course, then, you know, the, the biggest, the, you know, the aims of the project is to restore those natural processes, but also, you know, increase the variety and abundance of species in the woods and, um, and to help 
build resilience within the woods and to to help fight climate change and mm. so th there's a lot there's a lot uh, but it's happening it's it happening. is happening it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> That's absolutely, well, Don, I think I could sit here and talk to you for about like six hours, honestly. Um, <laughs> you're so passionate about the project and you're an absolute asset to Wildwood. So uh, thank you very much. Um, when we get to the end of the podcast, we have a little tradition where we ask our members and um, basically to just DM in and to ask some questions to you. But we are lucky enough to have our first sponsor. We're thrilled to announce a new sponsor of today's podcast, Veloso Tours. Veloso Tours is one of the UK's leading specialist tour operators to Latin America, India, Indonesia and China. Veloso Tours share our commitment to ethical practices and animal welfare in all of the destinations they specialise in. With over 25 years experience, they offer unique, personalised and authentic tailor-made holidays for couples, solo travellers, small groups and multi-generational families. Their ethos is to provide an authentic, in-depth experience of the local life, history, incredible wildlife and culture of each destination with expert local guides to join you on your adventure. And good news, Wildwood members receive a 5% discount when booking. Simply quote your membership number when speaking to Veloso team and they'll get it sorted for you. Now we go on to the questions. Thank you very much Veloso Tours. Um, nice little logo there as well. <laughs> Don, if you could pick a question and then hand it to me and I'll read it out to you. Pick a question. Brilliant. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Um, if you could swap places with any animal at Wildwood for a day, who would you choose? And what would you do as that animal? Oh, Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to pick Bucky. Oh, he, is a, he is such a cute little bear. Oh my gosh, he is so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to be in his mind for a day would be, wow, it will be a party. <laughs> Running around with fluff and so, yeah. yeah, and climbing in a big oak, sitting in his oak, swinging his legs, looking around, winding up yoga next door for <laughs> the elk. <laughs> I think, yeah, that would be quite amazing. I think, yeah, definitely. I think that's a great answer. Brilliant. Okay, <laughs> question number two. We do three of these, by the way, Don. So, yeah, question number two. Oh, number two. So, fantastic. Oh, this is a good one. What common misconceptions do people have about native UK wildlife? I think, yeah, one of the, one of the biggest, biggest things I've found is people tend to see green as healthy. Mm. And I, it's, uh, and I t take, take the, 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 the Bleen Woods, for example. It's, it's a site of special scientific interest. It's, um, it's uh, they're beautiful woods. And, and they've got uh, hazel dormouse. They've got uh, heath fritillary butterflies. It's one of the hot spots for. And, um, but if you spend time walking through the woods, I mean, we could go in there now and we could spend a day wandering through. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be able to show you fox tracks and, Badger tracks. Uh, um, we, we'll probably see grey squirrel, which is not native. Um, we um, we'd be lucky if we see a, 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 a munchak. Um, you know, you sort of, and, and the more you sort of immerse yourself in in those woods, you start to realise there's something missing. You know, we just we haven't quite got there yet. I mean, it's a good start, but uh, and um, um, it's it's a very sort of homogenous landscape um, we we've uh, you've got you know 40 percent uh, conifer uh, straight lines you know planted conifer 35 um, percent is sweet chestnut coppice 25 percent is uh, native broadleaf woodland and that's that should be unacceptable we we should have uh, you know we should have areas that are 100 percent for nature I, I feel anyway I, I just I I mean the dream is to 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 to, to have um, areas where we've got the complete circle you know I'm, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm gonna get stoned now but uh, I'm gonna mention a predator <laughs> do it do it don't be brave <laughs> But you have, um, you know, pine martens out there, um, uh, or um, or wildcat, uh, you know, completing completing that cycle, completing the circle, and um, you know, you may not even see them, but just the fact that you know that you can walk through these woods and potentially see one, um, to to see signs of them, um, you 
know, that that would be that would be amazing. And maybe and, it speaks to like that yeah. spirit that you're talking about that, that something has changed when she, when you know there's there's the species in there. Okay. I think that's a, a, a great answer, Don. Yeah. Um, okay, third and final question before we have to say goodbye to you, Don. Oh, another one. <laughs> and good timing that we'll just wait for this to uh, to mooch past. <clears throat> okay. What's the funniest thing an animal has ever done on your watch? Oh, the first the first thing that springs to mind is uh, is, is is Bucky. <laughs> Sorry, I got, <laughs> Back I got, to got him again. Oh, he is oh, he's an endless source of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one day I um, it was uh, sort of l late afternoon. I got I got a call on the radio that um, uh, Jürgen, the, the male elk, was um, was running his antlers al along the fence. And I thought, oh, that's uh, something's up. So I thought, strange. So, so I went up to the to, to go and have a look, and um, and yep, there was Jürgen running up and down the fence line with these antlers along, and there was this big crowd of people. And I thought that Jürgen has been protective of of Caramel, his his girlfriend, who's who's an estrus, and um, and and then I started to feel this like little prickle on the back of my neck, like somebody was watching me. And I turned around, and there was Bucky in the enclosure next door he was up a sweet chestnut tree and he had figured out that Jürgen was a little bit fueled up and he was winding him up he was sitting shaking the tree at him like this and I was just unbelievable such a bucky and he was like he got caught you know and he climbed down the tree and off he went and uh anyway so and then uh, Jürgen calmed down and uh, everything returned to normal and I, and I went off and about an hour later got the call again oh my gosh this little bear <laughs> doing it again we had to put him in time out because he was <laughs> being so naughty oh he honestly he is the naughtiest bear in the world that little thing <laughs> he's so cute <laughs> oh, amazing well thank you so much for your time john we've literally just had someone coming over saying how long uh, we, we need done back so you're a busy man um yeah thank you so much for your time and i'm sure we'll see you in another podcast soon it's been an absolute pleasure nathan thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. Don. really you. appreciate it cheers